ninja. Cursed are the Dullars who know cannon stones, that they should be as stones. Wretched are they, and mean with paucity that never was simplicity. By choice they made themselves immune to pity and whatever mourns in man. Those words were written by Wilfred Owen in his great poem Insensibility about the First World War. And he was compelled to write those words because he was shocked, shaken and appalled that so many back home in the UK were unmoved by the carnage, the horror and the waste of the war on the Western Front. This jarring fact was for Mr. Owen nothing less than a debasement of humanity. And now, in a very different situation, but for a very similar reason, must I state the stark, bloody fact that by choice, the meat and dairy consumers in our society have made themselves immune to all of the extreme vile violence done daily to millions of non-human animals in their name and for the sake of mere profit and pleasure. To satisfy the desire for a bite to eat, a burger, a sausage or two, or perhaps a splash of milk in a cup of tea, people choose to remain as dullards, as stones, in the face of the cry of agony. They have no pity. Well, I choose to. And my choice is to raise my voice and to stand opposed to those who remain immune to the suffering of the innocent, the defenceless, those animals who are utterly at our mercy and are shown no mercy or pity, but instead get a kick in the face and a knife in the throat. No one should sanction and be satisfied with the horror of the farm and the slaughterhouse. But many are satisfied. And they are satisfied because they have allowed themselves to be lulled and pacified by a soothing, calming, cozy lie. It's all okay because we must eat meat, apparently, even though I eat none of it and I haven't died, and you eat none of it and you haven't died. But it's all okay because, well, why should we care? After all, they are only animals. The common opinion says that farmed animals are all stupid. They have no understanding of the world. They are unthinking, unfeeling and unknowing. Are but beasts, dumb, with no language, no emotion, no mind. And thus there is no need, no need at all, for us to care for their welfare or their lives and deaths. Thus, we may commit violence against them, we may confine them, we may beat them, kick them, hit them. We can poison, burn, cut, mutilate, stab them as we want. We can tether and tie them, deny them any freedom of movement, refuse them food, water, living space, the chance to breed, the chance to nest, burrow, fly, forage. Whatever would be their alleged wants, we can remove it and replace it with a chain and a cage. And whatever we do to them, and we can do anything we want to them, we do not have to care about it being done. We need never give thought or consideration to what happens to them under our hand, under our boot, under our knife. However much the blood flows or a cry emerges from the mouth, however much the beast may struggle, twist and turn to run, however much it may seem as though the brute reacts to our rough handling and violent killing, it only seems to be so. It is not really so. It is only a seeming. It is not real because they are not real. They are not a they but a mere it. So kill it, cook it, eat it. They do not think, therefore they are not. They are nothing. And that, all of that, is a bright, shining, murderous lie. <laughs> to believe that it does not matter, to believe that it is no big deal that these animals suffer terribly in fear, to believe that it is all okay for it to be so because they are only an animal, 
is to fall into a foul conceit, shielding one's mind to an obvious truth, retreating into a fantasy utterly disconnected from the real world, smothering oneself in a comforting blanket of lies. The suffering, fear, despair, pain, terror, endured and experienced by any bull, any cow, any sheep or chicken is just as real, as viscerally, dramatically, appallingly real as the fear and pain of any human. And if it is just plain wrong to cause any human to endure fear and pain, the desperate horror of incarceration, torture, and the terror of an imminent bloody death, then it is just plain wrong to do that to these farmed animals too. Variety and death of non-animal experience is to deliberately lie about everything that is visibly, obviously on display every time we encounter a farmed animal. Their senses are finely tuned to their environment, in many cases more finely tuned than our own, offering a richer appreciation and awareness of the natural world than any human ever could. It is absurd to believe that they have in any way a weaker experience of their environment than us. It is different, yes, but not in any reasonable sense weaker. Their world and their life matter to them. They should matter to us too. Countless stories attest to the vast range of farmed animal emotions. Their cognitive abilities, their interpretive analysis of the outside world, and the full measure of their psychological and emotional comprehension of what is happening to them, good and bad. The animals that we farm know what we are doing to them, and they do not like it. The animals that we farm understand their fate, and they are desperate to avoid it. The animals that we farm look into our eyes, see our intent, and they are terrified by it. But today is the day when we can stand proud in our determination to recognize them and acknowledge them and respect them. And so, to the exhausted cow barely recovered from childbirth, worn and tired, and in desperate sorrow, bellowing for her lost calf stolen from her. We know you, and we will remember you. To the disabled chicken with broken wing and burnt feet, crippled and unable to stand, barely emerging from infancy, only a few weeks old, and already destined for a bloody death. We know you, and we will remember you. To the bull who is heaved up, hanging upside down from the hoop. Bruised and beaten, seeing, hearing, smelling the killing of his cousins. We know you, and we will remember you. To the male chick, discarded like rubbish into a refuse sack. Weighed down and crushed by his brothers. Unable to breathe and slowly dying. We know you, and we will remember you. And to the sheep who peeps her head from the side of the truck, taking her to her killing, reaching, grasping for a final gasp of fresher, life-giving air, we know you and we will remember you. Like you, I carry their pain in my heart and the moral horror of what is done to them through my every waking hour. We know that we cannot stop it all today, and heaven knows we know we cannot stop it all tomorrow. And we cannot save them all today, and we cannot save them all tomorrow. But like you, I will never sway in my resolution, and I will never waver in my opposition to this industry of carnage and cruelty, this most barbarous and pathetically pointless of humanity's murderous schemes. And I absolutely will not stop ever until that damned industry is done for and damned to history for all time and we see the rising of the sun on that glorious day when we can finally say they're free today they're all free today every last one of them is free today thank you